Do women get fibroids from birth? Are they present at puberty? And what happens to fibroids after menopause? You might be wondering about this question, so let's look at the answers in this video. This video looks at the effect of fibroids on women in different age groups. First, around puberty and adolescence, the reproductive age, perimenopausal and postmenopausal ages. Fibroids are non-cancerous growths that develop in or around the walls of the womb. These common but benign tumors can affect women of various ages from puberty to after menopause. Understanding how fibroids can affect women at different stages of life can help us identify the associated risk factors in each case and determine the most effective treatment options. So first, around puberty and adolescence, which is around age 10 to 19 years. During puberty and adolescence, hormonal changes are instrumental in developing fibroids. Although rare at this stage, fibroids can happen mainly because of an imbalance between the estrogen and progesterone levels. Typically, fibroids that develop in this age group tend to be small and asymptomatic, that is, they don't cause any symptoms. But in some cases, they can cause menstrual irregularities, which can lead to heavy and prolonged menstrual bleeding and anemia. So it is rare, but young teenage girls can sometimes have fibroids. The treatment options we have for girls in this stage typically include hormonal methods like birth control, which helps to regulate the menstrual cycle and control symptoms. Next, we have the reproductive age group, which will include women within their late teens to early 40s. The reproductive age is the age of most significance when it comes to the incidence and the impact of fibroids. We don't know the exact cause of fibroids, but we recognize that certain factors can contribute towards its development. For example, your genetic predisposition and family history, hormone imbalances, being overweight or obese, and your ethnicity or race are thought to play significant roles. Within this age group, the most troublesome symptoms include abnormal, heavy, prolonged menstrual bleeding, pelvic pain, trouble passing urine or trouble with your bowels, and fertility issues. Now, of course, the treatment options will depend on the severity of the symptoms, the desire for future fertility, and the size and location of the fibroids. So we will have options that range from conservative treatments, including medication to manage symptoms or hormone therapy to shrink the fibroids. On the other hand, we will have minimally invasive procedures like uterine artery embolization, UAE, or surgery like laparoscopic myomectomy, which is an option for a woman who is seeking to preserve her fertility. In more severe cases, a hysterectomy may be recommended. Now, let's look at the perimenopausal age, and here we're looking at around 45 years and older. Perimenopause is the transitional age that leads up to the onset of menopause, and here it is characterized by fluctuating levels of hormones, estrogen, and progesterone. While fibroids may begin to shrink during this stage because of the low lowering estrogen levels, they can still cause symptoms. And so what women within this age group might experience include irregular bleeding, pelvic pressure or pain, trouble passing urine and so on. The treatment options are similar to some of those we have for the women in the reproductive age. You might find that hormone therapy or minimally invasive procedures might be suitable for controlling symptoms. But in some cases, if the fibroids cause significant issues or are quite large, a hysterectomy may be recommended. And now let's look at the postmenopausal age. And in this case, I'm looking at women from the age of 51 years thereabouts and beyond. Postmenopause is a stage a woman reaches when she has stopped having menstrual periods for 12 months. Usually fibroids tend to decrease in size around this stage and symptoms may improve due to the low estrogen circulating in the body. But in some women after the menopause, fibroids may still persist causing symptoms for reasons that we don't fully understand. And so postmenopausal women who have fibroids still require monitoring as they can develop these symptoms such as pelvic pain or pressure or urinary problems. The treatment options again will depend on the severity of the symptoms and this might include hormonal therapy or if necessary surgical intervention. Okay, so the only question we haven't answered after going through these four different age groups of women and fibroids is do women get fibroids from birth? Well, the answer is no. We believe that in addition to some of the factors that we don't fully understand yet. Hormone imbalance leads to the development of fibroids. 
this hormone imbalance doesn't really start until a girl gets to the age of puberty so the answer is that fibroids do not exist from birth however the mechanism by which they develop could start while a girl is still in the womb or around the time where she is developing well before she gets into puberty Make sure you check out this video here where I talk about the risk factors associated with developing fibroids and some healthy habits or practices that people who have fibroids can take in order to manage and live comfortably with them. So we've seen from this video that fibroids can significantly impact women of different ages from puberty and adolescence to well after menopause. Risk factors like hormone imbalances, your genes, weight, ethnicity can contribute to the development of fibroids. Treatment options will range from conservative management like taking medicines or minimally invasive procedures like uterine artery embolization or surgery. A hysterectomy may be considered in certain cases where you don't need to preserve fertility or the symptoms of the fibroids are quite severe. So understanding the possible effects of fibroids at women's different age groups may help doctors to provide the appropriate treatment options and of course to support ladies who are having to deal with this condition all their lives. Please send any questions on this topic to my email health information service. The link will be there for you in the description box. Give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Check out our stores for our fibroid decision tools and trackers throughout this fibroid awareness month. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.